Today we're going to be choosing the best camera for vlogging, or at the very least, we're going to learn how. I get it. Choosing a camera can be a really tough decision. With the multitude of cameras that are already out there, with new ones coming out every single month, it's hard to choose which one's going to be right for me. So today, we're going to talk about how to find the right camera for you, and we're going to go out and check out a whole bunch of cameras. One of my favorite YouTubers right here in Japan named Sherry, who's currently traveling the US, came to me to help her find the best camera for her vlog. Her setup was very, very specific. Her needs were very, very specific, and it got me thinking. But then it happened again. I had my friend Sharla post on Twitter saying that she's trying to choose a new camera, and boom, the list of recommendations was absolutely fantastic. Which brings to one point. There's not really a wrong answer. It comes down to what do you need. So we're going to jump right in, and we're going to talk about the different options available, and which ones might work for you. Do you need a DSLR? Will a handheld do? Are you looking for something more like a GoPro? I've got a ton of these, by the way. Or can you get your whole setup going on a cell phone or even a webcam? Side note, this entire channel basically started on my cell phone. If you take a look at some of my old videos, it was pretty much all done right here on this iPhone 6S. And I like the videos that came out of it, so... I'm going to skip over the whole chat about how the equipment doesn't matter because if you're watching this it means that you have questions about the camera, you already know that. So let's talk about how to choose them. There's a few factors that you want to take into consideration when you're choosing a vlogging camera. Now this list isn't perfect but it should get you started. So a few things that you want to think of. Number one, where are you going to be vlogging? Is it going to be indoor? Is it going to be outdoor? Are you going to be stationary? Are you going to be moving around a lot? And if you are going to be outdoors, how do you plan on carrying it for the day? So I'm going to start by talking about my personal favorite vlogging camera, which is this right here. Actually, right now it is this. The iPhone. This is my personal favorite because the camera on it is already pretty good and it's already in your pocket all day anyway. The best camera is the one that you have on you at all times. You don't know when you're gonna to wanna to add something to that video. You don't know when a cool shot's gonna come up. Let me show you the quality here for a second. We're gonna to switch to the selfie camera. This is the selfie camera right here. It's not terrible quality. It's a little shaky if you notice. The stabilization isn't there. But if you know what you're doing, you can get fairly crisp and clean shots, especially in situations with good lighting. Let's switch over to the rear camera. Now the rear camera obviously is where it's at. You're gonna get image stabilization, but you're gonna have that downside of holding your phone out and everybody on the other side seeing what you're doing. If you're vlogging indoors, it might work for you. If you're vlogging outside, not so much. You might wanna stick with the selfie camera unless you have one of those cases that covers the screen. All right, let's go back to the DSLR just for a second. So you can see the iPhone is not a bad option for vlogging. Now another good option for a lot of vloggers, because it's easy to carry and they keep getting better and better, is a point and shoot. This point and shoot is back from, I'd say, probably 2007 and I have not used this thing in years. If you're going to use a point and shoot, you're going to want one with a flip out screen, which this doesn't have. A lot of vloggers will make the mistake of getting themselves a point and shoot or a mirrorless camera that doesn't have the flip out screen and they're not sure of their framing and they very quickly get frustrated with the cameras and give up and have to get a new camera or completely change their approach to video making. This here is almost a 10 year old camera. Actually, it might even be, nah, I'd say it's almost 10 years old. The quality on this thing isn't fantastic and the other thing that you're gonna struggle with with some point and shoots is the audio quality, especially when you get hit with wind. But let me show you what this one looks like. This is the quality from my almost 10 year old point and shoot camera. It's not going to be as fantastic, but I'll still be able to make videos if I have this thing in my pocket. Another plus being, I can either just palm it, holding it exactly like I am right now, or use a smaller form of gorilla pod to carry this thing around, and it's not going to add a lot to what I have to carry in the day if I want to do an outdoor vlog. One thing I do want to say about point and shoot cameras is that a lot of the companies like Sony and Canon are making 
making better and better point and shoot cameras every single year. To the point that when I set up my current vlogging setup, I was really on the fence between getting a nice DSLR or just getting one of the recent really good point and shoot cameras. The big deciding factor for me was lenses, and we're gonna talk about that later. Before we talk about lenses, I wanna talk about this little guy right here, the GoPro. My opinions on the GoPro are very, very simple. The GoPro can be a great additional tool to your filming set, but I would not recommend it as your primary vlogging camera for indoor or outdoor. Yes, you get a nice wide shot. Yes, they can be edited to look really nice. Personally, I feel that if you were to shoot your entire vlog on a GoPro, A, you'd be sacrificing audio quality big time, and B, how can I put this? GoPros are very unique. When someone's using a GoPro, you can tell they're using a GoPro. It's a camera that has impact. And I think that any camera or lens that has really high impact should be saved for very specific situations. But let's take a look at what it actually looks like. So here we go. This is what the video looks like on the... And that was a perfect example of another issue I have with the GoPro, which is the battery life. Albeit more recent GoPros have a lot better battery life than this old Hero 3 Plus. All right. I give up on the GoPro. The battery just will not last for me. Honestly, GoPro used to be one of my favorite cameras. I used to use it for so much stuff. I did a video that I will link here about the coming of age ceremony in Japan and I shot the entire thing on a GoPro. But I think that video serves as a really good example of why entire vlogs or videos like that should not be shot on GoPro. The video was interesting, but the GoPro was not the best choice for that. And now before heading out to check out cameras, we're going to talk about DSLRs. Obviously a DSLR is going to give you the widest range of flexibility and the widest range of options for your vlog. You can change out the lenses, you can change out the microphone, you can easily carry extra batteries. The DSLR is heavy. My current setup is using a Canon 80D with a 17 to 70 lens which goes wide to fairly zoomed. And I will typically carry it on a Gorillapod because I like to set the camera down in a lot of spaces and I just like the way this wraps nicely into my hand so I can hold on to it. When we're looking at DSLRs or mirrorless cameras, there are a few things that you want to take into consideration. A. The lens. B. The battery life. And C, obviously, the cost. It's been said in other videos, so I'm not gonna go over it, but spending this much more money might get you something that's this much better. The trick is to find that sweet spot. That sweet spot where it's just good enough to meet your needs and it hasn't broken the bank. I'm gonna take a sidestep and we're gonna talk about lenses for just a second. I specifically chose this lens because I wanted something wide enough to do vlogging, yet something that I could still use for zoom shots and photography. When you're taking a look at lenses, you may already know this, but there's something called aperture. And aperture is basically how wide or narrow the lens can open. Let me show you some examples. If I take a look at a kit lens that came with my initial Canon 60D when I bought it, you can see the aperture. And the aperture on this lens starts from 3.5. It's fairly narrow and it's not going to let a ton of light in. This here is a fixed focal length 30 millimeter lens and this one has an aperture of 1.4. That lets in a lot more light. A lens with a lower aperture like 1.4 is going to give you a really soft look in the background and it's going to let more light in. Like, Let's take a look at this. This is the 3.5. That's what that looks like. This is the lens with the 1.4. It's a pretty big difference between how much light these two let in. I'm actually going to take a second to show you guys what these lenses look like. Let's start with the 18 to 35. This is the 18 to 35 right here. This is it wide at 18, and this is it at 35. Now you notice the video is a little bit darker. It's because I haven't adjusted the lighting settings. I've just left them exactly as is. The other thing that you're gonna notice with this lens is it's a cheap kit lens, which means when I move, you're gonna hear the sound of the focus ring. Watch this.
Let's take a look at this bad boy. This was my favorite lens for, I'd say, half a decade. It is a Sigma 30mm 1.4. It makes everything super soft and lets in so much light. Let's check this out. So this is the lens at 1.4 open super wide, nice, soft, bright. It's a nice lens, but the downside to this particular lens is I can't change the focal length and it's not super wide, which means all of my shots are gonna fit right inside of this box. But look how soft that background is. Even look if I put my hand back here, totally out of focus, can't even see it. Don't know what my fingers are doing. How many fingers am I holding up? I love lenses with a wide aperture and when you're choosing a vlogging lens, I don't recommend choosing anything that goes under 3.5 to 2.8. Let's go back to this lens. That is a, a basic rundown on lenses. Now, there is one lens that I forgot to mention and I'm gonna show you to you guys just for a second because it is super cool. It is this lens right here. This is a super wide angle, eight to 16. This is that super wide eight to 16. This is only a little bit wider right now until I open it up to eight. One of the cool things with a lens like this is you get a lot of edge distortion around here. So like, check this out. Look how long my arms are. Quick summary on choosing lenses. You're gonna wanna find a lens that's wide enough that it can fit everything that you want, but potentially one that's got some zoom as well so that you can play with the focal length. Additionally, you're gonna wanna find a lens that has a wide aperture with a low number. 1.4, 2.8, things like that, really good. Anything over 3.5. One thing I haven't talked about yet is mirrorless cameras. There are some fantastic mirrorless cameras out there that have interchangeable lenses. I got kind of tired of sitting. Some of the mirrorless cameras that are out right now are just as good, if not better, than some of the DSLRs, especially for vlogging applications. But the most important thing, other than battery life, side note, I used a Sony a7R2 for a while and the battery life on that thing was absolutely atrocious. I was carrying like five batteries and going through all of them in a half day shoot. Make sure that you are well versed on the battery life. Check reviews. One of the most important things, if not the single most important thing to buying a camera for photography or for vlogging is how that camera feels in your hands. To be honest with you, there aren't that many bad cameras out there. What's important is how you feel about that camera. We talked about the flip out screen, obviously an important function, but also the feel of the camera. Do you like it? Does it fit in your pocket? Does it fit in your bag? Does it fit well in your hands? When you hold it and try to vlog, does it feel like something that you'd be able to carry around and use all the time? The feel of that camera is probably the most important point. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go and help another YouTuber, Sharla, who runs a channel here in Japan. You probably know her. If you don't, linked. We're gonna help her pick a vlogging camera today. In order to do this, we're going out to a huge camera store here in Tokyo in an area known as Akihabara. It is called Yodobashi Camera. Let's get going. So that is Akihabara, and this is Sharla. Hey. So let's go get you a new camera. As I talked about before, one of the most important points to choosing a camera is choosing something that meets your needs. Mm -hmm. So, Charlotte, before we go look at cameras, yes. what do you need? I want something that's easy to carry. I realize that this is probably the easiest vlogging camera there is, so I'm not expecting it to be uh, as comfortable as this one. Maybe just slightly okay. heavier. Okay, so maybe a handheld or a mirrorless. Yeah. Okay, what else is important? Um, I want to up the quality a little bit. I'd like the picture to be a little clearer, and okay. if possible, I'd like that pretty bokeh background. All right, so we're going to want a lens with a wide aperture. 3.5 maybe, preferably 2.8 or lower. It needs to have quick focus because I move around a lot when I'm vlogging. We're probably so. going to be looking at a Canon then. Canon has one of the best autofocus systems mm -hmm. out there right now. Oh. So. And then the sound quality has to be good, but the built-in mics usually aren't that great, so I guess it would need to... Yeah, the built-in mics are garbage. Let me show you just how bad they are. God. This is what it sounds like with the built-in mic. You hear all that? Mm. No. So we're going to want something that can incorporate an external microphone. Yeah. Um, train. Trains. <laughs> 
So based on this, lightly, without looking at anything, what we're most likely looking for is going to be a Canon high range point and shoot or mid to low range mirrorless camera that can incorporate an external mic. I think we're ready. Yeah, let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> As promised, we're at Yodobashi in Akihabara. Here we go. Third floor. Third floor. The goal of coming out here is to get a hands-on with the cameras so we can really get the feel for it. Is here. And welcome to Camera Paradise. You gotta check this out though. Seriously? Look at these lenses. Look at this. Do you think this should be my new vlogging camera? <laughs> I think I need this lens for vlogging. I, w I wouldn't be surprised if I saw you walking around <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it's uh... $12,000. It's only $12,000. It's a good starter camera. It's insanity. <laughs> I don't even I don't even know if it's possible to lift. I'm not even gonna try because I don't want to be the guy who drops the twelve thousand dollar lens. <laughs> Future goals for toys. <laughs> we just tried out the G1A. And what didn't you like about it? The focus kept switching between myself and the background. Not good. No. <laughs> Very unexpected for Canon. On to the next camera. We're going to take a look at the mirrorless cameras, if we can find them. Yeah. The exact cameras that we were originally talking oh, yeah. about. I really expected right? it to be bigger. The real question is, can we find a lens with a wide enough aperture? Mm, so nice. <laughs> Like it. Right now, this is the camera that's pretty much checking off all of the boxes that Charles is looking at. It is the Canon EOS M5, and we found a 22 millimeter lens. So what are some things that I couldn't do with this lens? Because it looks really great right now, but would it be good, say I'm like trying to get like a wide shot of the street or something? Hmm. The cool thing is they have this little chart right here, which shows you the width all the way from 11 millimeters all the way up to 200. The lens that we're looking at for Charlotte right now is around 22. But the goal is getting that really soft f2 aperture. How often do you use the zoom function on your G7X right now? Very rarely. Very so that rarely. lens would be pretty decent for you then? Yeah, I think okay. so. But now for the most important point of this entire thing is how does it feel? It feels like I would gain some muscle. <laughs> A little more than with my G7X, but it's definitely a doable weight. Mm. Let's get a real look at how Sharla looks in this camera. First, we're gonna take a look at the quality on Sharla's current camera. This is Sharla's current camera. All right, and we're gonna switch over to her potential new camera now. This is Sharla's potential new vlogging camera. Better, right? So much better. Yeah. Love it, love it. Okay, going back to my camera. And my camera, there we go. <laughs> so what do you guys think? What do you think, Sharla? Have you found your new camera? Yeah, I like, I like this. I'm happy with this. I expected more enthusiasm, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. I'm not 100% like sure yet. The next big thing that I want to ask, because it's also a very important part of the camera purchasing decision, is concerns. What are you worried about? The focus, I guess. Mm. I, want, I think I want to test it out more to see if the focus is quick enough. Um, can I put a mic? It. Yes, you can. You need to buy a mic now. <laughs> <laughs> Camera has been decided. And now we're getting out of Yodobashi. That is it. That's what we're doing. Charlotte went with the uh, Canon EOS M5, a 22 millimeter lens with an aperture of f 2.0. For that nice blurry back. Right? It's yeah. going to be wonderful. And that is how to choose a vlogging camera. Now, honestly, this isn't the most comprehensive, you know, detailed thing in the entire world. So if you have questions, do leave them below. I will do everything that I can to answer them for you guys. This is going to be, this is my first video talking about camera stuff. And honestly, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> you should do more. You're good at it. <laughs> I've been like on the fence about it. So if you guys want to see more camera stuff, more technical stuff, leave it in the comments below. Let me know. Don't forget to hit like. Don't forget to subscribe if you are not already. We'll see you guys soon.